Thank you for coming and thank you for the uh, kind invitation for this uh, interview and for this important conference. Uh, Kids Heart is a center that is primarily dedicated for the uh, diagnosis and management of fetuses and children and even adults with congenital heart disease. Congenital heart disease occurs in about 1% of all life births and this is something in many times that you continue to live with throughout life and that's why we continue to see even adults who continue to have the problems. Uh, we uh, were established in September 2013, so a little bit of a, a, almost two years now. Uh, this is a center that is affiliated with uh, Columbia University Medical Center. Uh, it is run by two consultants who are both American uh, board certified in both pediatrics and pediatric cardiology. Uh, the uh, scope of services that we provide are mostly outpatient uh, management and procedures starting from uh, fetal life, you know, the fetus is basically uh, basically the baby in the womb, where we look for evidence of heart disease in the fetus for certain moms who could have that, and then uh, moving on to newborns, uh, infants, and children, and even adults who may have heart disease. Uh, we do all kinds of uh, uh, non-invasive and outpatient procedures in the, in the clinic, uh, uh, we also look for um, arrhythmia, you know, electrical activities, uh, disturbances in, in the hearts of, of our, our population. And then uh, the third line of, of, of management would be prevention for acquired heart disease that is becoming more and more prevalent in children, such as obesity and hypertension. Uh, we do do procedures, more invasive procedures, therapeutic procedures, like uh, cardiac catheterization and intervention, like you know, closure of holes, as you can see here, with, with these device, special devices. But this is, we do it in affiliated hospitals. We have four hospitals that we are affiliated with uh, inside the uh, Dubai, and then two in, in Abu Dhabi that we also uh, do procedures there. And my colleague, uh, Dr. Suleiman, who is my co-partner co in, the, in the practice, is also American board certified, does cardiac MRI for also children and, and, and adults with, with heart disease. Uh, we are, as I told you, affiliated with Columbia University. Uh, we do have a direct line of communication with them. Uh, we do have regular visitations from their team. Uh, sometimes we refer patients if it becomes very difficult to treat. They require certain complex procedure, procedures that are not available the, in the Dubai or UAE. And we also have a, a direct telemedicine uh, communication with them on pretty much like a daily basis. So whenever we get a case that we need a second opinion, we basically established this telemedicine for having a quick uh, response. We usually send our like input, our 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 uh, our patients' uh, data after the permission, of course, and images uh, online, and then we get the feedback within an hour. So we much like have have an answer uh, all the time. So that becomes very uh, uh, very convenient actually because it basically it minimizes the chance of a patient requiring to go abroad for a, for a, for a second opinion. And then we come back and we basically discuss the case with the patient and then we advise them for the best therapeutic option. So Columbia University is one of the Ivy League universities in the U.S., which is the top ten universities that have been there for more than two centuries. Uh, it's medical school, it has two medical schools, one in Cornell, Cornell Medical School, and then one Columbia Medical School. Um, I serve uh, in the Department of Pediatrics together with my partner as Assistant Professor of Pediatrics and such that we do, get, do, we do go there to provide education for the American students and residents. And we have established since the uh, uh, beginning of last year an exchange program. So they do uh, take uh, medical students and residents to rotate there, and then we do accept also their medical students and residents to rotate with us because they have an international program in their uh, medical school. This is an excellent question. Um, as uh, I probably mentioned earlier, you know, congenital heart disease occurs in about 1% of life births. And the majority, more than half of the defects that we see in heart disease are actually repairable, as such that children are expected to live near normal life. And I cannot say it's normal life, but I would say near normal life, because with early intervention now, with early surgeries, most of the children who have heart disease, even the complex ones, are expected to survive into adulthood. And matter of fact, in uh, 2009, the number of survivors, uh, and adults especially, 
who survived their congenital heart disease after surgery surpassed for the first time uh, the number of uh, children born with heart disease in the U.S. So now you're basically getting uh, a kind of an imbalance between those who did have heart disease and they survived and between those who were just born with heart disease. And as the technology improves and as the intervention uh, starts early, uh, as I said, you know, more than 90% of the children are expected to live into adulthood. And that basically creates challenges for the pediatricians who were not trained to take care of this number of children because in the old days, not you know, half of the children will die before they reach adulthood you know, because of, the, of their heart disease. And now they are coming basically to be almost adults. So now there is a, a, a difficulty and a challenge, not only for the pediatricians, who take care of them until the age of you know, 16, 17, 18, depending on the country that you live in, but also for adults when they go in and they become uh, uh, adults, uh, they get take, taken care of by uh, internists and by adult cardiologists who, are, again, are not familiar with their underlying disease. So this is part of the challenges. And uh, what I try to, to, to do in my talk, to uh, basically give some idea to the pediatricians of what to do for the children. Because we get so many calls uh, many times about a child, for example, who had a defect similar to this one, or to this one here, which is repaired, and you know the child is back to normal life. But he has a stigma of having a heart disease. And then the pediatricians, you know, uh, basically uh, get scared and freak out because the child needs vaccination or he has a fever and they don't know whether they could give him antibiotics or antibiotics or they could wait because of the heart disease. So it's, it's basically a part of kind of a continuous education to enlighten the pediatricians that things are not as bad as it used to be, you know, 20 years ago. And most of these children are, you know, normal, uh, such that they have normal level of activity, they have uh, normal school achievement, they can live like normal life. And if you just see the child from distance, you wouldn't know whether he had a heart disease which, uh, which uh, has been repaired or not. So that was the, the basically uh, the, the aim of, uh, but this will be the aim of my talk uh, to end the conference. Okay, that's again a very nice question. Uh, there are breakthroughs uh, worldwide and every day we hear something about a new procedure that again prolongs the life of a child or even heals the child. Uh, some of the breakthroughs are basically uh, managing a lot of heart disease uh, without having cardiac surgery. We call it minimally invasive procedures, which is what I do. It's basically called interventional cardiac catheterization. You know, cardiac catheterization is basically trying to go uh, into the heart through a small vein in the groin and uh, what we now in many in many of these procedures we actually could uh, put devices similar to this for example to close hole in the heart or you know holes in the lower part of the heart which is about 30 percent what we see in heart disease there are also uh, uh, through the same procedures you could you know uh, dilate uh, you know, narrow or, or, or uh, stenotic uh, valves heart valves you could now also put in prosthetic valves, uh, also again through the vein into an area where this could be uh, needed. Uh, you could uh, try and put devices in other holes in the heart or other vessels that are abnormal without really having to go through cardiac surgery. So that is basically something that has uh, happened and continued to evolve over the past 10-15 years, so this is relatively new, yet adding to the number of children who now are fixed that can lead normal life. Now, uh, talking about the uh, practice and the, the uh, presence of breakthroughs in the UAE, it is there, but I have to say that it's not as, as developed as it is uh, back in, in other European countries and, and in the US. And simply because there are rarity of pediatric cardiology specialties who are specialized in these procedures. Uh, that's only available even in Europe and in the US and only in certain centers. And unless you are trained well to do these procedures, because it's not something that we're just going to start and learn to do here because it's very well developed now. So it really shouldn't be a learning care. The learning care that you have, you should have had it during training. And now here you just practice it. So I would say that these practices in the US, in the in, in UAE, are not as developed as other, for example, aspects of medical care, like, for example, surgery, like plastic surgery, like, you know, a lot of procedures that are very, uh, Dubai is, is very well known for that. And mostly because of uh, maybe lack of awareness, for the first part and the second part is 
because this needs also a lot of infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's quite expensive, you know. This device, for example, is about $5,000. So it's quite expensive to, to, to have that. So you need the infrastructure to, to do that. And you have certain techniques and certain procedures that have required certain infrastructure, you know, certain cameras and certain imaging techniques that are not available, unfortunately, in a lot of the hospitals, but it's, it's improving. I mean, I've been here for almost two years in Dubai. I worked in Abu Dhabi for nine years in Tawam, and even in Tawam back, you know, nine years ago when I started, we didn't have that, but then we just, you know, got it. And then in Dubai, over the past two years, things are, are improving, you know, dramatically as far as taking care of, of heart disease. Uh, but I think we could do better. One of the things that we really lack is basically a lack of highly qualified specialists in this regard. So talking about pediatric cardiology specialty, I think in Dubai even, for example, there are maybe only two or three, including me and my partner, who are well qualified and trained. Uh, and uh, again, talking about the whole UAE, maybe it's a handful of, of qualified specialists, and only a few of them can do these procedures. So that's, that's one of them. And the second of them is the lack of infrastructure in many hospitals. And I would, I would I'd like to add a third one, especially in Dubai, because the Dubai market is in, in many aspects uh, governed and, uh, uh, say, controlled by insurance companies. And a lot of insurance companies, they do not cover heart disease because it's a congenital anomaly. Uh, although the government of Dubai has actually uh, uh, you know, been uh, trying to rectify that, and they have passed several laws about mandatory insurance, and part of this, uh, mandate is actually to cover everything that the child could have. So, but you know, I, I would say it's good, but it could be better. First of all, I think awareness. So, this conference is an important uh, aspect of getting uh, the healthcare professionals to know about heart disease, that it does exist, and that it's not as scary as it used to be, and it's something that can be managed and is fixable. Uh, uh, um, um, it's also that uh, these you know, advances and breakthroughs are available, and they are improving, so that would be a way to basically do more and more of these procedures. Uh, the second thing is through uh, you know, uh, public awareness, public media, you know, having uh, uh, you know, meetings for, for, the, for, the, for the public, you know, regular people who are not healthcare professionals, again, to give them education about heart disease that is not as bad and that is not as, as, as scary as, as people would think. And the third thing is governmental level, is basically making mandates, like, for example, the mandate for uh, uh, mandatory health insurance. I think this is going to advance the uh, healthcare in general, especially when it comes to pediatric heart disease uh, significantly. I think the, the aspect of heart disease is an area that it's uncomfortable for a lot of the pediatricians. And uh, when you talk about heart, you know, people just you know, get scared. And, you know, uh, you know, even like a, a, you know, a dad or a, or a father, I would say, oh yeah, my son has heart disease, then it becomes you know, like something astonishing. And this also goes to the pediatrician because um, heart disease is, is, is um, a little complex when it comes to children because a lot of it is an anomaly. So the, the function of the heart gets disrupted somehow. And this is an area that it's very, very difficult for the pediatrician uh, in their busy practice to, to see. Uh, it's not common, and it's such that it's not something that like a, a cold, where they would see it every day and they become comfortable in treating it. It's not like an ear infection where you know what to do. It's an area that it's, that it's a little difficult to, to do. So my, my aim and my goal in giving the talk is basically one single message is that okay a child who has a heart disease yes he does have a, a, a problem he does have a, a chronic disease but this child is uh, is capable of living a normal life this child is capable of practicing uh, a, a normal uh, hobby hobby uh, practicing a normal school performance uh, this child is basically somebody that if you see from distance you cannot say that he's different than anybody, to, uh, anybody else or any other child who did not have any heart disease. So I would like to get him into this comfort zone where they know what to look for and they know that, yes, these children may require certain things to be done, 
but it's not difficult to take care of them. And, and it's, uh, you know, by being as, as, as pediatricians, they can be advocates for the children as far as giving them the right vaccines, giving them the right medications that they need, uh, you know, advising school that they could, you know, practice normal life, they could do a lot of exercise, they could do a normal exercise with our help. So I would like to make it as simple into dividing the types of, of heart disease and then the types of surgical repair and as such that uh, bulk of these children, uh, only only few conditions you probably have to have some restrictions but for the most part I would say more than 80% 90% of children who have gone through a repair of heart disease you could live pretty much like a normal life and you should have no, no restrictions. I think the, uh, uh, this conference with its reputation and being held on pretty much like annual basis now in a, a time where everybody would anticipate to, to go and attend and having this uh, international presentation from people all over the world and heavily attended by healthcare professionals is yet another important tool of getting uh, good health uh, education information to the people. Uh, especially healthcare professionals in areas that are uh, tough, or areas that are difficult, and areas that are evolving. You know, uh, again back to congenital heart disease. You know, back to the question that you mentioned about uh, breakthroughs. This is a way for them to show that yes, there are, and it's something that is available, and that changes the face of practice for children with heart disease. And as such, that we would like to get them into this comfort zone not only in heart disease, but other aspects of, of topics that are discussed in the conference. So it's an important platform for everybody to come in to meet, and then to discuss, and then to get uh, a knowledge that will uh, make the pediatricians uh, be more comfortable in discussing these, these, uh, these, these topics.